taken his first picks age 10, Jonathan Baskin has been seeing the world his own way for 50 years now. A Hasselblad designated photographer and practicing architect and pilot, a day with this man is not one you'll easily forget. Jonathan, flying in combination with aerial photography is something that you're really passionate about. How did this take off for you? Uh, flying started for me as abject fear and uh, developed along the way. I've never really been comfortable in planes, particularly when piloted by others. You don't find me hitching rides with the other guys here. So it was to overcome a problem uh, I thought I had, and I started off in helicopters and then migrated to gyrocopters. And you're right, it is a passion. Jonathan's latest work can be seen in the new book, Abstract by Nature, featuring his haunting photographs of varying contrasting landscapes in and around South Africa. His creatively decorated Skyhound allows for imaginative flights of fancy. A gyrocopter is somewhat of a mix between a fixed-wing aircraft and a helicopter. It looks like a mixture between the two, but in the similarities with a helicopter are essentially that they both have rotors. The rotor here swings in the air and operates as a wing, and if you look carefully, you'll see that the rotor isn't powered at all. It windmills. A helicopter is a helical screw. It's like a wood screw. It screws itself into the air and uh, is powered the whole time to maintain itself there, and then you alter the angle of the screw that he uses the same brand of camera NASA astronauts used in the Apollo moon landings is entirely in keeping with his maverick approach to his art. Only Jonathan is a crew of just one, doing everything up here at 5,000 feet. I'm asked often about the skills required to take photographs and fly an aircraft. Well, they're two different skills, and I happen to combine them. The only difference is that I prioritize, and flying an airplane is by far the most important thing and taking beautiful pictures is something I aspire towards, but unfortunately in this location, a secondary consideration. Did you enjoy that? Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> of course, the flight is barely half the excitement, the other 50% being the anticipation of what results the camera may yield back in the studio once he's returned from a shoot over the Indian Ocean, the Atlantic coastline, or the Richtersfeld Desert. What's it like for you witnessing the transformation from what you see in the air to what gets printed out in the paper? Indescribable. Really, it's like giving birth, I should imagine. Not that I've done it. <laughs> but uh, it's a creation. Uh, a lot of decision making has gone into it. And you know what? I didn't see all that when I was taking the photograph. I had an aeroplane to fly. I had all sorts of things. I saw a blur. Mm. I saw textures. But I knew there would be things in there. What's interesting here, of course, is generally I prefer just nature, mm. the random forms of nature. Mm. When man interacts with nature, you get geometric shapes. Mm. Flying today, it was hard for me to see any of this. Well, actually, you flew over this today. Yeah, that looks familiar. That's right. Yes, this was the confluence. That Bloberg at Double Bay, the little island is out here. And you end up with two opposing tidal forces, and people seem to be fascinated by the tides when they meet. Yes, yes. This is interesting. This, what, what does it look like to you? It looks like annuals on a tree trunk. Yeah, correct. It looks like <laughs> a cut through a tree trunk. It's actually yeah. not. It's a view down onto a mountain mm -hmm. that's been... Mm burnt and ploughed, but you're quite right, it's amazing how often the same forms in nature come back in different media. His background as an architect in Europe, Asia and the Middle East has clearly taken an innately good eye and instinct and trained both into very effective instruments. You know, my choice of subject is terribly personal and sometimes in flying over something just jumps out at you and you know it's going to work. I mean, I've spent a lot of time looking down the viewfinder of a camera, and so I tend to bracket and see what's going to work. And what's art? I mean, look, I'm in the decorative arts. There's no deeper meaning in what I do. But it's form, color, texture, contrast, and sometimes a bit of harmony. And it's a balance amongst those things, which work perhaps subconsciously to help me choose a particular shot. In between it all, he's married his student love Vivian, who's also a successful artist, had two talented children, and it turns out he plays a mean jazz keyboard. I'm in utter amazement at your lifestyle. I mean, at 60 years old, you're still firing on all cylinders. Yeah, I really am happy at 60, I must say. I'm healthy. Uh, things seem to have fallen into place with my various activities. I can't wait to get out of bed in the morning. 
I really can't. I was in my office at 5 o'clock this morning printing out yesterday's pictures. And when it's a day like today, I know I'm going to be part and parcel of the spectacular environment in this wonderful country. And in the end, what goes up comes down to singular images like these, which allow the rest of us to live just a little of the life of this outstanding South African artist and his magnificent flying machine.